walls. It looked tiny. I couldn't even see the people. Yeah, they're they're tiny. Are, are those people? <laughs> they're <laughs> aliens. Aliens. They're, they're not people. They're pebbles. 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 Yeah. Thank you. They're pebbles. Um, yeah. So I thought, you know, let me give people just a minute here to get in the class. Okay. But, Don't forget to record. Oh yeah. Thank you. And Rob? <laughs> my guardian. Yes. Could you show us how to do that brick work as well? Uh, a way to do the brick. Yeah, there is. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. There's several different methods, but let's see. The problem is if you get too carried away on the brickwork, it'll take away from everything else. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, let me make sure I'm pinned up here and record to the cloud. Okay. Okay. So looks like we're getting them in here. Oh, I was going to share the screen with you. Let's just start here. Which one? Oh boy. There we go. Um, oops. Share the screen. Okay, this can you see this? This is Charles Reed. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. See how loose he is? I love it. Oh yes. yeah. He's and ready. look at his figures. See, even though I put those photographs in there, you don't have to you don't have to paint all the details. It's not really the thing that makes it work. Really, uh, in this case, uh, it's the beauty of the watercolor that's making it work. And the pattern of the, you know, he's got all these sort of patterns of shapes going on in here. Rob, who is this again? Yeah. Charles Reed, R-E-I-D. Okay. Yeah, yeah, familiar, thanks. Yeah, he's pretty much the, I mean, he passed away a few years ago, but he's pretty much the premier watercolor teacher out there. <clears throat> Let's see this one here, huh? There's a quick sketch. Oh, that's it's good. simple. So it makes big, big use of the big giant spaces. Yeah. It allows you to get your chance, uh, your an eye, eye a chance to relax on an area. Here's an area. Let's see. Right there too. And what else do we have? You get the idea. I have a couple others. I just want—I didn't want to do the close-ups of the people. I just wanted to do the things that are more at our vantage point. Here's one. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You see the how simple the people are. He, he treats the, he treats the whole page almost like a mosaic. You can think of it like. Colors besides colors, and they all add up to something. I love how he just writes in there too. That's great. I guess like a real sketchbook. Okay. There's another one. Yeah. Big. Big giant areas. Okay. All right. Did we do this one already? We did. So, Ron, yeah. uh, I have a question. So, uh, is there a, a line between a, what is a sketch and what is a complete painting? Well, that's more up to you. That's kind of up to you. See how loose he is? This, 
I mean, some people would consider this a complete painting. Other people would consider this a sketch. So sketches are usually meant to be steady, steady for other things. So my, I keep hearing my voice back there, so I don't know, it's maybe someone turned on their phone or something. Um, but you see, there's a good detail, right? Look, look, well, let's get into some detail on this piece. Wow. You see how he treats this guy? Just so loose. So you could consider this a sketch, but other people might consider this a finished watercolor painting. Look at see how he makes as, as much of an issue out of the drip and the wash and the and the bloom of the color as he does the image itself. There's a good way to handle a whole crowd of people. It's like a mosaic. So Okay, that was really close up. <laughs> okay. So Charles Reed is a good one to look at. Always a good one to look at. I think it, I think it said, I was reading this on his Facebook page. Uh, I think there's 13 books he has now. So I think he started making, the one I got, I think he made in the early 80s or the late 70s. He's got about, uh, the last one's the best one, that, uh, Charles Reed's Secrets. Secrets? Oh, it's I've a, never seen it's that. A, it's a sketchbook. Okay. Well, he was a very cool. nice man. I knew him well and his family. Oh, you did? I, was, I took many oh. lessons from him, and I was very sad when he passed away. Oh. And he's really a direct painter, and he uses, shat he does really excellent um shadows and he's very um uh it takes a long time for him to paint a painting oh really because they look like they're done so fast huh i know but he just like really the values are incredible on his paintings yeah who is that that knew him i i missed the speaker's name charlie reed no oh, what's your name oh charcy <laughs> San Diego, the San Diego connection. Yeah, San Diego. My sister Charlene. Okay, let's uh, let's get into this uh, value study here. Just do a quickie. So now, what we have, if you look at the line, let's let's take the main lines of this thing. Uh, we have a, a wall here. Oh, whoops! I'll do it up there. I'm sorry. The, the walls here. So let's just determine how far you want your wall to be. Yeah. And we're in there. And and then it kind of goes up. And notice how it kind of goes uphill. So if we were to if I were to carry this line all the way over here like that. You could see that. And let's let's just determine where our bottom is. We have this much road here, and maybe like this much sidewalk. Then this is gonna. So our point would be about there. That's our uh, vanishing point, VP. And so that means our horizon line's about there. Why do you need to know that? Well. I can see that that um, the if you look, the things below the horizon lines are going up, and the things above are going down, and the things right on the horizon lines are pretty level. So if you look at like the bottom of the window seals, they're almost straight across from each other. Whereas if you look at the gray part of the white wall on the base, on the bottom, this gray part, it's slightly going uphill. So you know that uh, I'd say that the horizon line's a little bit above those window seals, somewhere in there. And then the top of the window seals, I'm sorry, the, the, the bottom of some of those windows, like let's say in the middle, starts to go a little bit downhill. So that, that can help you to proportion things and. And as long as you're loosely 
close to that, you're fine. You don't have to be really, you don't have to break out your ruler or anything like that in this. So, so that's, that's my method. And that, that I use that on everything. I'll, I'll just do that on everything. But most of the time I'm not even, I'm not this specific. I, I usually just go, oh, okay, 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 let's go. But that's what I'm thinking right there. So, oh yeah. Let's forget to, let's mute. Okay. All right. So we could start, we could start anywhere. We could start, uh, let's start with this doorway. But we'll say it's about that far apart in the doorway. And you know, I'm looking at all this now thinking, you know, I think I want that doorway to go over this way a little bit more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it over here. It's gotta start somewhere and you're gonna, you know, and so wherever the top of your doorway, wherever you think that should be, just take it down to your vanishing point, about like that. Maybe the bottom up, about like that. And now I don't have as much window over here, but I have a little bit more area for the people. So I may take this window here, which is right in line with all this, and maybe I'll just crop into that a little bit more. I don't think I need all this area anyway. And uh, so the bottom, of, if this is where I decided the bottom will be, well, why don't we just take that to the vanishing point? Okay. And that gives you the bottom of all the other window sills. And this gives you the top of all the windows. See, all the window sills and doors kind of fall in line. So pretty. And there's a, a sort of window area there. And we have another doorway, you know, and if you don't get all the doorways in there, it, I don't think anyone's going to care. But see, now I'm going to try to use the doorway to silhouette um, maybe his head or something. So we'll see. Right. Yeah, this doorway over here would be like there, but most of this is hidden. And we have a little doorway at the very edge, <laughs> something like that. And we have a neat little, well, let's just, let's just throw this up. We have this um, tent thing here, whatever you call those. And um, kind of comes up, whoops, it kind of a little bit more flat than that, like that. Hey, Rob, can I ask a question? Yeah. So if you notice that the sidewalk is actually narrow, it's not, it's narrower at the doorway to the left and wider. Are we ignoring that? Just uh, you know, whatever shape you like, yeah. And in a value rough, I'm not really trying to get that perfect. It, it It's kind of a curved road. It looks like the road is kind of curving or something like that. So, um, just draw that in the way you, you see fit. It's probably not going to matter in your piece, whether that's wide or narrow. Um, let's see. And so we have, if we have a doorway here and we have a, this here, then we have sort of a round plant and I love that plant. That's really cool. Just warms the area up, doesn't it? Here, I'll, I'll zoom in on this a little bit more. Sits on a bit of a box. Oh, let's see. And we have a little table. That's nice because it it kind of it's something in between the door and here. It brings them together. So we could throw that in there. Okay. 
Turn around, we got the shadow on the ground. Shadow on the, oh, here comes the guy blowing his thing again. I hope it doesn't disrupt my class. Okay, so I'm, going, I'm just going back up to the top of these windows. I know, see, I know once I get that line there established, maybe it's about that far, but I know all these are gonna fall in soon. So like this, boom, 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 boom. That's kind of the, let's say the inside of my little window seal there. And this one gets leveled out. This one's beginning to go uphill a little bit. This one's a little bit uphill. Because that's going to the point, right? We've got some thickness in here. On the inside of that, we get a little bit of a cast shadow in there. That'll be nice. Um, we've got these windows. Some stuff in there. That'll be fun. Open windows, nice. I'll try to yellow the blower guy. All right, and then let's erase this area out a little bit more. Uh, let's see. The girl starts about here, and her face is. You know this gray thing on the wall so it's it's around that area somewhere so her face is around there and what i do is just block it in like this just block it in you know we're just doing a value study now so i wouldn't really get too too carried away on this Interesting tablecloth shape there. And we've got our guy over here. He's about like this. And it's more tables, more, more tablecloths. And our other guy munching out so i think actually this piece actually has a little more of that so we could do that if we wanted to take this curve over a little bit we could just extend it that way and this is what you do in a value study you just kind of figure out your composition most of their heads are about at the same level this guy's eating his morning, morning brioche or whatever they call that. And sitting around on something like that. He's pretty close to the curb there, but we'll see. Get some neat little shadows on the ground. You can see I photoshopped that shadow in there when I put him in there. A lot of shadows underneath stuff. Could have left a couple more little gaps in there. All right, so if she's mostly in shadow and her hair is really dark, so she silhouettes up against that light wall but he's yeah he's in shadow and see i don't like this coming right in the front of her face so i'll, I'll make sure that i do the finish there we go and avoid that okay Get a dark back here. And we 
we've got a neat little shadow. Blocking all that out. And then this side of the tablecloth is sort of in shadow. So we got light on dark, dark on light. That's what I was looking for. I might even want to pull in a nice little, something light right behind her face there. And I'm not gonna worry about windows here. I'm just gonna get the value and really dark here. There's some good darks back here too. Um, really dark under here. And there's some shadow, looks like some shadow on the wall or something. Kind of a dark pot. And some, some neat little shadows on that. Um, yeah, they've got an interesting shadow on the ground from this. And oh, yeah. nice dark in there. Nice shadow. Some more darks in here. And I like those menus, they're really interesting. And some lanterns. Just something like that. Yeah. They cast neat little shadows. Photoshopped everything. I put, I sort of staged in these big, big shadows. Oh, by the way, I like that sort of flaggish cloth hanging from the top. I think that's really cool. Um, mainly, I did that for drama, for staging. If you'll notice, I closed this corner right here, and I closed this corner. There's a little shadow on that. As if there's something shading that area. And I close this corner over here, like there's something shading that. And I, that's called a lead in shadow in the Robbie handbook. <laughs> I never really call that, but that's what I call it. And, and I have it over here too, of just staging this as if maybe it would be kind of cool if that would, if that happened, you know? Maybe there's just giant palm trees or flags or something creating all of these really soft edged cast shadows coming down. I mean, I've seen that kind of thing happen. So, so again, I'm just gonna throw in some shadow in here and I have another strip of shadow kind of coming through here. Very light, soft edged shadows. There's another one here. And they just kind of stage the moment. You see how they just kind of pull your area, the viewer's eye into the focal point here. Such. And there's, of course, there's all kinds of details, but in general, yeah. And we'll get to that rock work. 
Don't you worry about it. We'll get to we're gonna get in here. We're gonna do oh boy, we're gonna get some rock work going. Yeah, I, I usually handle that with the watercolor. But you know, you'll see a lot of architects do this kind of thing. They'll just sort of uh, sum up some some travertine or whatever they call that rock work. I love how it gets really intricate toward the bottom. Really, they're kind of small. We can we can just drop some drips. We can drip in our rocks. Well, I'll show you my drip rock technique. Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. I like it. Let's look at it from far away. All right, that explains. So when I'm doing something like this, I'm asking myself, well, what is it and where is it? So. And that's all I care about. And then what are the values in this case? Okay. Um, let's, see, let's get to that. Let's do the color now. Okay. All right. So, you know, I looked, it looked pretty much like our horizon line was almost in the center. And you could just do something like that. So I use really loose lines, really loose lines, just to kind of just to kind of figure this thing out. So, and these are just they're they're not absolute or anything. I just I start off by just doing a lot of scribbling and roughing things out. And I come into about, about that much wall. Here we go. And about that much of the top there, maybe something like that in there. And our, we could say maybe that's around there. Just guessing. That too. Just, just headed toward toward the full uh, toward the uh, vanishing point. And what I mean toward it, it, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be exact. Look at Charles Reed. His perspective is not exact, but it just comes out so human and emotional. You know. You know, I was looking at a whole bunch of his paintings, and. Um, there, there's a couple of photographs of Sargent. Um, from you know, there's photographs of Sargent, and he paints those photographs in his paintings. I saw a couple of them. I was laughing. I was like, "Oh my God, that's Sargent!" <laughs> Giving tribute to his master. Okay. So what I'm doing right there is I'm gonna say, okay, I want my window seals to be, uh, the windows and the doors and the top of them to be about with that line. See how that, that just lines them all up for you? Okay, what I could do here is say, okay, if, if this is the level area, then maybe the bottoms are, of the window seals are going uphill, which means slightly uphill. So I'll just say they're about there. And then that gives me my window seals. The doors are about that high off the bottom. So, you know, you don't see the doors over here. So it's me and just have this door. And then, so let's just position our door there. Let's position our, our window seal area there. And look at it, it just falls right into place. There's my other window seal. And the other door, there's gonna be a person there. And maybe another door. We could come down from the tops and say, okay, there's the, um, you know, you have this little, architectural detail there um, where that's where that starts 
So, but they're all in line too, right? So we could do like this. And if you want to put your little hooks in there to color up, so feel free not to, but I mean, for all I feel like, they're fun. Okay. Um, right, that table is kind of nice. Some of these look good guys. Details, if you like. Oh, there's even a little planter up there like that. That'd be a nice little place for color. All right, so then uh, I'll just erase out all this stuff. Give myself a big old area. So we, we know our guy here is right below there, approximately there. And he's got shoulders. And there's the back to the chair. And that's about all the drawing I do, really. I mean, just. He's just a prop. He's like the plant, you know, just a prop. In proportion to this, he looks a little small. So I think I'm going to. Think I want him a little bit larger. And we've got the other the guy here. Sipping on. A tasty beverage. And the girl dazing off into the beautiful, sorry. Okay. See big, we're gonna leave big areas. Just to let, let paint flow. That's why I don't like too much of this mess in there. Nice, easy to read. You just tell yourself where the edges are to things, that's all. And so think of, let's see, let me get my pink here. Think of what we're doing now is we're just doing the same thing we did there. We're shading the thing and we're adding values, that's all. But we're doing it with paint. Letting the paint be beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> Let's, uh, I think this, this wall right here is, it's orange. I would say orange. And then what you do is you just add a touch of blue to that. So again, right? Red and yellow to make the orange. And then a touch of blue. We'll gray it. And then, you know, there's little grays and cools in there. So you add a little blues and maybe little yellows to warm it up here and there.
Okay. You see how loose I am with the pain? That's what he does. Charles Reed. Watch up. If I take a little bit of blue here, just little accents here and there too. Just cools it off. You can take a little bit of yellow and warm that up here and there. Just got this massive area. That's what I'm looking for. Big giant areas. Let's do the ground. The ground's not unlike this. We could even get more terracotta with it if you like. It's pretty gray. So I'm just going to take that color here and right underneath everything. Oh, I forgot to put the plan in. Tell me about that plan. I think I want mine to be a little bit redder, a little bit more terracotta because the road's so gray. I don't want it to be like the road. Maybe what I'll do is I'll stress it a little more terracotta-esque here. Maybe, maybe even more red in it. That's a lot of red. But I don't want to get too crazy with this. But then I, I, what I'm going to do is let that go gray toward here so it can separate from the wall there a little bit more. And then when we get down here, this is all um, a much bluer. So just, again, I would use the same colors, but add more blue to the color here. Try not to get it too dark because I want to glaze a shadow over this later. So this is actually the light. It's pretty bright too. You know why? Why? Since we have it on our brush, I'm seeing a lot of that warmth in these uh, windows. Kind of a beige. I want to emphasize the uh, orange. I mean, it's, it's not unlike the wall. <clears throat> you can get grayer with it if you like. I'll let you, you know, do whatever you like. It's it's your painting. I mean, you know. Golly. Okay. Some of these. Yeah, some little accents. Oh, we do sort of have this little plant here, and I like that plant. I don't know why I left it out. Sorry, plant. There's a lot of orange in that too. Stronger orange though. And it's got some cools in it. Good enough. Some really dark stuff below it. Nice and in loose. Just keep everything really loose. I'm gonna hit some. I'm just using Prussian blue for that dark back there. And we have a lot of like deep green, dark in the windows. So I think that Prussian blue, if you want to throw in a little bit of uh, magenta or cad red, that'll make, that'll give you a dark. See? <laughs> it's dark. I'm not going to bother putting in any detail on this.
you like, you can just hit a couple of these little ditties. Really dark in there, especially underneath. Some really good darks in there. I mean, these darks early, aren't they? Well, wow. just goes to show you don't have to be, you don't have to do everything in this perfect order. Especially when you paint this way, this sort of mosaic way, we're just patching in everything. You can kind of do anything you want. And the, the artist that's really great at that is, uh, the last name is Pren, oh boy, I don't know how to say it, Prendergast. Pren, Prendergast? So I, I think that's it, Prendergast. Maurice. Yeah, great, great for this sort of mosaic thing. And you can tell that that Charles Reed really takes a lot from Sargent and Prendergrass. Very, very different kinds of artists. You may find you really like this approach. I know I do. All right, let's just get a couple in there too. You know, a point is Charles Reed always mixes on the paper and he never mixes on his palette. Is that right? Yes. I, I would definitely, I, I'm kind of doing that, but uh, I would like to do that. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. I didn't know, no, thank you for telling me. I didn't know that. I think I read that somewhere and then I forgot over the years, but it, it looks like he does it. Yeah. So let's just say, let's just take this gray on the bottom here. Watch. <clears throat> so you could take, watch, I'll take a yellow. We'll see. We'll say it's about this high, and uh, and a red, and a blue. And see, you get all the little byproducts that way. I don't like this being even with the top of this uh, table. I'm gonna take it a little higher. I'm not so sure I like that. I didn't put it in there. And it did come out pretty, pretty dark, so I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. Just, there we go. Um, oh, and I forgot to put that little scarf hanging down whatever it is, whatever you like. Again, you could use any colors you like. We've got a green tablecloth. So Prussian blue. You throw a little bit of that on there and a little bit of yellow. That's very, that's a lot of yellow. And then we have a really yellow tablecloth. I'm going with a lemon yellow. A couple of red chairs back there. Just little accents, whoops, that got out of hand. That's when you just dab. Is 
because we're working really small and they use a lot of water. You know, another interesting artist was Don King, Kingman. Oh, Don King, yeah. The the wrestling promoter? I'm just joking. I don't know. He was just a interesting when he did figures. It was a or the boxing promoter. Uh, yeah. I'll check that out. I don't know. Here, I'll write that down. Don King, Kingman. What are uh, watercolor? Amen. Okay. Yeah, there's a little box, a little orange box up there. I don't know what that's for, but throw it in if you like. A little splash of color right there. little colors on the windowsill and terracotta pots. Um, you could take a little bit of yellow in the plant and maybe add a little bit of Prussian blue. Maybe some of those up in there too. Maybe in this guy too. Just some little color excuses. It's pretty dark under here. I looked it up. It's Dong, D-O-N-G, Kingman. D-O-N-G, King. Man. Man. It was involved heavily in the watercolor society down here years ago. Oh. Anyway, interesting. Yeah. Hey, it's always great. Um, Don, could I, this is Phoebe, could I ask, Three things. Um, one, could you pin your video, and then it won't go to a. Are you, are you talking to me? Yes, to you, Rob. Oh, I thought I did have my. I I am pinned. Yeah, I'm pinned. Okay. Somehow it goes to the speaker, and then we we all need to individually pin. You all need to pin your video. Yeah. yeah. Need to pin it too. Sorry, sorry. No problem. Um, Everybody, and, pin your video. Yeah. And then also, could you, before you go to the final, could you focus on both the, sh the value study and the color study so we can take a um, reference photo? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Could probably do that now. Okay. Um, okay. If I don't remember though, give me a holler. I'm famous for not remembering my name. <laughs> I don't even, okay. Oh, uh, let's see now. A couple of colors in the people. He's got sort of blue in his shirt and she's got something sort of, um, pale, pale warm. And she's so small, I would just throw something over her face, kind of pinkish. And him too, I guess. I guess they're all kind of pinkish, aren't they? And then a um, couple, of, couple of shadows. Some shadows on the ground. Well, now... Let's see, some ultramarine blue. I'm just gonna hit some ultramarine blue because we've already got color down there, right? So if I put just, if I mix up a color, it's gonna get even grayer. So just straight ultramarine blue will give you a nice shadow. Because remember, it's mixing with the colors below it too. And kind of like that, we get the shadow on the wall there. Maybe something under here. Remember to mute yourself. Let's see. 
Okay. I gotcha. And okay, let's let's start staging this thing a little bit more. Let's hit a a shadow in here, and then maybe keep a wet brush. Just just a wet brush, so you don't have these really hard edges. Just keep it like that. Nice soft edges, because these let's say these let's say these uh, are from far away, something really high up, casting them. So they might not have really hard edges. So there's a good way to use Photoshop as a tool. I just kind of invented it. I have some experience doing that because I used to have to do it for murals quite a bit back in the day. It's a little dark back there. Put something more in here. And so on. I had something down here in the bottom. And even these have little shadows in them. They get kind of dark in there too. And what else? These tables have a side to them too. They've got a dark side. <laughs> no. uh, they take a little bit of a side here. All this. This person too has some shadow on him. Nice little darks underneath everything. See how they just anchor things? I think we're, we're getting there. Maybe a touch of a shadow on her. Dark hair against a light wall, light person up against the dark. We have another dark back there. And I forgot the shadow of the um, this little canopy here. Cast a neat little shadow, you know, kind of down here. I do a lot. I'm oh, right on my guy's head face. Sorry. <clears throat> Shadow down here. Okay. Something in the curve there. I don't think we have a staged. Of a stage looking thing. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat the finish very much like this. You know, the other day I was looking at remember the Cuba scene we did? I was looking at that. Um that one looked really good. And it was just like this. I mean really neat little things. <laughs> Cut this out, 
make a patch it on the front of a piece of watercolor paper and fold it and make it into a card for somebody. Wouldn't that be a hoot? You know what a hoot is, right? Okay. Um, and certainly, I could see a couple nice, well-planted darts as this dries up. I mean, I really want to smack a couple of little darts under there. Really kind of grounds things. I think we're looking pretty good here now. All right, so let me zoom this out and let you take a photo. I remembered. Go ahead. I can take a photo too. I have a little, this thing has a camera on it. Listen. Did you hear that? <laughs> Thank you. I have my Logitech uh, webcam has a little has a little photo thing in it. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, now let's. Are you trying to tell me to get moving here? <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. I'm just joking. Um, there, oops, where's my piece of watercolor paper? Is it under there? It always escapes me where they go. I don't like that. So sure about the green uh, wall though. I kind of want to mix that gray right on there. Maybe I won't do that. I don't know. We'll see. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not trying to copy Charles Reed here. I'm just. I'm just trying to use uh, his way as an example of just how to be loose. When you're doing sort of a, a complicated kind of situation, I mean, this would intimidate a lot of people, but it shouldn't intimidate you. It's it's a really, if you handle it loosely, it can be really really nice. Okay, so let's just I'm just gonna sort of draw out my parameters there. Let me see if I can see the whole thing in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll draw it a little bit darker so you can see. And I don't want about that much wall. I might need a little more paper over here. Looks like I'm gonna need more. Over that way. So there's my wall. See how loose my drawing is? It looks better too, by the way. Secret. Lots of secrets. <laughs> Just looks more human that way. Okay. And we could just say, okay, maybe maybe we want the wall going up in there. Probably not exactly that angle, but let's say something, something like that. And we'll take a look at our way around here. It's not very wide. You can see there's only like this much dark showing. And you've got the uh, I don't know, stuff around the outside, whatever you call that stuff. Stuff and stuff. HR stuff and stuff. Yes. I was a child of the 70s. Okay. I can put all those in line like that. That can kind of help you. I mean, you could just not even do that and just rub it all in really loose. But I mean, this helps you get it all in line, which can be nice. And so if there's the midway line or the, well, we call that the horizon line.
see how loose I am with that? Don't bother getting too, too nuts with it. This will help you, you know, this gets you in the spirit of just painting loose. And when, when you do that, your drawings loose, your paintings loose. You get this really, I just, I, I just indicated a little bit of a shadow there. I don't know why I did that, but I did. Just to let you know what that line is. Maybe I should take that out. <laughs> there we go. We got a little, couple of these little guys. Fine. And just think of it being an old. I don't know where this place is. Kind of rustic. We got our little menus there. However, you'd like to put those on there. A little table. Maybe if you could read the language on the menu, we know. That's it's cool. No. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely written in a foreign language. That road, you'd have to go to the East Coast to see a road like that. Sometimes they have a couple of them over there. Yeah, <laughs> cobblestone. Oof. I got that nice. Pot there. It's got the little scrollies on it. There's a little step down there too. I didn't see it. See how those lines just kind of guide you? You don't have to be perfect with it either, but they help. Wait, I should say, you don't have to be perfect with it either, but it helps to be perfect. No. <laughs> Just joking. No, this is not about being perfect. Keep it loose. We'll just handle this with some watercolor. We'll just draw that in with a watercolor. Slightly goes uphill because this is level. You know, now we just handled this with all these little pots on here, just throw a couple little pots on there, and they have, and that's it. I want the watercolor to do the work. 
it's so interesting how you could just put a green in there and then the watercolor swirls it around on its own and then it just adds up to something. I mean, your mind makes the rest up. Love these little plants and things on the wall. Little accents are great. I got something else way back, way back here. If you notice, I'm really just kind of drawing it the same way I did the, the comp. Because really, I wouldn't mind just doing a bigger version of that. And then, you know, there's a couple of things I'd like to change, and that's why you do it. Okay, so then if, if that's there and that's there, I'll put her about here. And let's just say her head is about that big. Just guessing. May have to redraw it. Maybe our table comes to about there. Things on the tablecloth, little cups and stuff. And then our guy right next to her is right here. Don't overdraw it because you'll you'll complicate it too much and then the watercolor won't flow. You'll be like in there with so many colors and you would be you'd be surprised how little you need. Something like that, maybe his head's a little small. Need a sharper pencil there. And maybe his head's a little larger over here. Okay. Got a table. Table that comes to here. And our guy over here is about, let's say he's right here. chair behind him. just a genre scene they call these <clears throat> genre scenes like the genre of cafe outdoor cafe paintings see it's just a it's a platform that you know people love to buy these paintings but the, the great thing about them is um it's sort of a platform for you to show off your style just like boat paintings right everybody loves a boat painting it's not 
or it's like a love song, you know, for musicians. I mean, it's it's not that it hasn't been done before. It's just it hasn't been done your way before. It's okay to do something that uh, and all the people that think they're doing something new. I love that. These, these, uh, my daughter said, she came home, and, do you like that artist Banksy? And I'm like, uh, I guess he's okay. And then she said, uh, yeah, but look, look at his style. And I go, well, let me show you where that style comes from. It's Russian constructivism, propaganda, art of the 19, you know. I mean, it's all been done before. Maybe not in your way, though. But you can go by, I mean, even modern artists who thought they were being really, when you go back, you go back and you go, wow, there, there was a modern art movement right after the high renaissance called mannerism. Or you could even go back further and find modern art movements in Gre Greco-Roman times. I'm almost, almost sure that there are artists that were just couldn't stand the dogma of um, of academia, the rigorous academia. And if you look at how how those Greco-Roman artists were so academic, oh my gosh, there had to be a, a reaction against that. But you know, we it's just all lost. But, you know, the more you study art, the more you realize there's almost always a reaction against the previous art movement. Except for today, when you have like 20 art movements going on at the same time. I think it's, it's just to the point now where, you know, and just remember this is the first time in history where if it, the world's been brought this much together. So we're definitely feeling the learning the learning uh, pains, the growing pains on that one. Because there's a lot of good about it, there's a lot of bad too, just like everything. Okay. All right, we got this neat shadow. We got this, we got this kind of neat shadow going down there, up to there. Just let myself know where a couple of shadows are. All right. I wish I didn't put so much attention into this. I'll just put a couple of little things in there. Oh yeah, we don't want to forget our thing. I think I'll drop it in around here. So I don't want it right in line with this. I want to drop it in about there. You could even put a whole bunch of them in there if you like. Put one here, maybe a little larger, and one back here. Man, that's gonna start looking dumb. There might be a way to splash a little color in there. Anyway, don't do it if you don't want to. I get little ideas, let's see if I can pull them off. <clears throat> really, if maybe the maybe it's a little flatter than that. My road, more like that, and the base of this back there. We're ready to rock and roll here now. This to be a little bit flatter. I think I want to bring my gray down here a little bit lower. I don't want to make such a big deal out of it. I don't like how it really influenced the other painting. It's kind of making making a fool of itself is what it's doing. Okay. 
Ready to paint. It's time to party. Okay, let's go. So I'm gonna make a little orange. I'm gonna take yellow and red and throw some orange on there. Let's get loose with it. Get loose. Just mix right on there. One of my favorite things to do. Paint right over those shadows. There's orange on this stuff. Yeah. Even the white, see? See how the white comes through? Um, get used to leaving that white and this sort of irregular edge to have it come over the line, under the line, you know? So you just have this really loose and easy look. That's what everybody loves. That's what I love about it. So maybe I don't want it that gray. So maybe I'm gonna throw a couple, couple, I mean, uh, maybe I don't want it that orange. So I'm gonna throw a couple little blue things in there. That's maybe two blues. I'm gonna work, there we go, work that in. That's neat. And the ground. Really easy. It doesn't matter if some goes into here. I'm just gonna take it over the whole thing and I'll blue this up a little bit later. Just covering those big giant areas. And you know, you don't have to paint it exactly like it looks. I mean, take a chance once in a while, throw in some magenta. Maybe throw in some uh, ultramarine. Opera. Opera, I don't have opera, darn it. I used it all up. Um, there we go. I accidentally dipped my brush into coffee, so I'll cancel oh. that. <laughs> Gosh, now you, now you got me thinking about coffee. <laughs> okay. A couple of white areas. Again, look at the Maurice Prendergast I told you about earlier. Oh, he makes such an issue out of these little white areas. Beautiful. Let's throw that gray on the wall. Um, I'm going to go for a much lighter gray than I put in the other one. Cover blue here. Paint right over that because it's blue anyway. And it goes right down here on the steps. The um, Actually, that color like through there looks pretty good. <laughs> I guess that blue I put down there must have mixed in with a little bit of orange, but I do like it. And I'm sitting here trying to change it. I'm going, why? Why change it? It's working. Why fix it? Now, there's obviously the, the one up there is much higher. It's up here. But I didn't like how it was catching the top of this and catching the top of this. And, Kind of creating a little bit of what we call a tangent, see? So, you see how loose I am with that contour? We could get razor sharp like it is up there, but again, you know, I I don't see the reason. Okay. Another thing is, uh, in this style, artists will make a, quite an issue out of the, the pencil line. So you don't see me erasing any pencil lines. Leave them in. Okay, taking a little bit more of that orange, Ye yellow, yellow and uh, it's yellow and red, right? <laughs> I should know. That's pretty orange. So, again, just if you want to add a little bit of blue to it, just. 
And that's pretty dark too, so I'm going to lighten mine up. Oh, I like that. Huh. I'm going to do that on all of them. See, I didn't know it was going to happen. And I liked it. It's all your choices. You know, the things you choose to leave and the things you choose to take out, that's your style. My stamp techniques in. <laughs> There we go. Okay, I like that. Kind of, it kind of looks uh, old and weathered. Okay, we've got this pot here. Since I have the orange on there already, why not? Pot's really neat. Take some blue in there. Fun. Okay. I'm going to take some lemon yellow and throw it in that gorgeous plant. Lemon yellow right over the front. Just let it leak right in. And then I'm gonna hit a little bit of um, like a little bit of pressure, and maybe to naturalize it a little bit, just a little bit of red or a little bit of orange. I have down there already, just and it just leaks right in there. And then I'm just gonna leave it and let it do its beautiful little watercolor thing. And be all yummy. Okay. And this is on some sort of, I guess it's on a chair, isn't it? Oh, or something. Oh, I don't, I don't even want to, I don't even care. Um, I'm going to make a violet. So ultramarine and magenta. And that's, that's how I'm going to do it. So as long as you get the value right with this, you can do any color you want. I'm going to get it's kind of a red violet. That works for me. There we go. Maybe some blues in there too. See, it feels like it's floating and we'll, we'll throw what we throw in those shadows. It'll look better. Oh, let's see. I hate to waste a color. Eh, that's okay. How about this light green? Blue, green. That's just a drip of water right there. That's just a drip. I'm just going to move around that drip. Just moving it around. Maybe it has a little bit more in it. OK. 
kind of a light green. So it's going to have Prussian. I, I just use Prussian with a touch of yellow in that. Let me go over here to the lemon. And I don't want to connect these two because that green is just going to take this, this right over. So I'm just going to leave those alone. <clears throat> I'm just going to put the lemon over here and leave a little white gap in between the two. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. I have to go. Just to get away from it for a little bit and come back. Got a nice light feeling to it. And Going here. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and with just ultramarine blue. I'm going to hit hit these little guys in there. Just some little details. Why? Because I want them to be dry. So then when I take my big glaze over the whole thing, I glaze in those shadows. They'll be. It'll be dry. You can make them green too, if you like, whatever you like. And since we're doing that, might as well do this. <clears throat> oh, there's more down here, huh? Wow. And since we're doing that, we might as well do this. So many little details on the wall. Is this another little plant right here? My goodness. Whatever. I love how that turned out. Huh. Okay. And like I say, the you know these up in the these little flags or whatever they are could could be great little opportunities to throw in some <clears throat> some serious color. Maybe I take I'm gonna use aqua here. I'm just gonna use ultramarine blue.
and and there's a little bit of yellow in that. There's a lot of water on that though. That's going to take too long to dry, so I'm just going to just going to dab it. Maybe something kind of orange. And it won't be this this bright because they'll have shadows over them. Oh, what what will give us nice a lot of time to dry here is let's go in and hit these darks. <clears throat> So, in fact, you know what we could do first is let's just hit a mild value on there first. Like, and what we'll do is do something light first. Instead of hitting the darks, we'll hit that really light and let it dry up a little bit. And then we'll paint around all this. <clears throat> and this will be like the highlights on the window seals and the highlights on the window, all these little highlight things thingies they're called thingies um same thing in here i go a little bit bluer i think maybe bluer would have been good in there too not so much back there let those dry up a little bit what i'm going to do is now is get some cast shadows like the cast shadow on the wall cast shadows underneath this we're still going to do our people Forgot all about them. For some reason, I thought I already did them. I guess because we already did them twice, didn't we? So we have this neat little shadow kind of just on the wall and on the ground. I think it's a little dark. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Just add a little water. And dab uh, under here, same deal. That's going to be really dark underneath here because no lights getting under there. Whereas this one, some lights getting under there. So <clears throat> that would be a good place to really nail a dark right under there. Under here too, it looks like. If you want to get picky, there's a couple. Little things in there. There's another chair in there too. I, I left it out because I thought it was crowding things a little bit. I'm use ultramarine blue and hit some shadow down here and on the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me, that really grounds things. There's kind of a little table leg sticking out there. I don't even care to notice it. I'm just adding a little water. These will have sharper edges down here because, um, because they're really close to the tablecloth. You know, fuzzy edges where things are further away. So a palm tree casting this over here might be a fuzzy edge. Or some of these might be harder edges down here. Getting pretty dark with those. I'm just adding water. Dab away. You could certainly make some of these tablecloths of different colors too. I think.
think since we have so much warm over there, maybe something cool. Just a blue. Back there. We do get some really good darks in there too. Usually right up in, in places where you just don't get a lot of light. That's giving that plenty of time to dry. Good. And this, these two, good. Let's do our people. Let's do the pebbles. And I'll show you, I'm just gonna break her down and I paint her literally like you see it. I mean, no detail. You don't really see people's eyes at this kind of distance. They just make shapes. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking for kind of color comparisons. But I do wanna notice that he has a light side to him and a shadow side, so I'm gonna let that side be in light. Yeah. She's got red hair, looks like. She's gonna take a little red, maybe a little orange. And I could lighten it up on the right side, on the left side. Something like that. It gets pretty dark toward her face too. That, that kind of frames her face a little bit too. I like that. So I'm gonna have a little bit of dark in there. That's it. That's it. Give her a shirt. Now, I don't think, you know, you know, <clears throat> if you get wrapped up into the photograph too much, you might think, oh, I've got to copy this shirt, you know, but Maybe the thing to do is to think, well, what other color would look good in this arrangement? Because we have reds and greens and yellows. You know, what could we use on her that might look good over there? Maybe, uh, maybe something in the, um, like burgundy or something. Well, she's already red, huh? So. You, know, you, just, you just kind of come up with these colors. Just kind of came up with a gray. Actually, I think a gray would be good here because we have so many primaries. Just red, yellow, and blue, mix them together. Add some, she's got a light side to her. I like that, so I really want to hit that. There we go. And he's got like a white shirt. Um, I think I'm like a lavender type shadow on him. Just, oops, a little bit bluer. So it kind of gives him a side and a, a left side and a right side. I just leave it all. Got a couple of bottles in there. Anything you'd like. Whatever else is happening. Just cast a little bit of a shadow, doesn't it? Since I have it on my thing. Kind of makes it feel like it's coming off. Those can be really effective. Let's go over our guy over here. He's got kind of a gray shirt on. Again, I'm gonna leave the left side in shadow as if the light's hitting him. And I think what I did in the Photoshop is I, I, I Dappled him with some shadows. He actually had a lot more light on him. I probably should have left it now. Oh well. Live 
learn. I got carried away with those shadows. As I usually do. So you see how many of the left side in light, the left side of his head in light, the right side, you know, come back and hit a little bit more shadow. And then right in between his body and everything, pop a little dark in there. See what that does? Gives you a little separation in there. Pop those little darks in there. I left out his feet. Oh, well. He got cold feet. Okay, let's see. And the whole idea here is just to have a kind of a, a scene. The thing about a painting like this is that it, it leaves, you know, and it allows the viewers to see the beauty of the paint and it, and it leaves mystery and it allows the viewer to participate in it, you know, and go, oh, okay, I see there could be things in here, you know, little, little niggets, little niblets of things. Um, whereas before in classicism, you know, it was all spelled out for them. And, and um, that, that's very skillful on the side of the artist. And it helps to have that skill, of course, but leaving some mystery too for the people love that. So this is a little cast shadow cast from the tablecloth onto him. I think there would be some shadow over here too. All that. And then we need some shadows on our table too. And I'm just going to use ultramarine blue. And that's it. Because it's already got color to it. So I'm going to throw some little little shadow on the side. That's a little bit dark. Just add a little water. Give it a little bit of a Kind of a side to it. And this one's going to be really light. Because it's a lighter value altogether. They cast shadows over the table. You could give him some hair. His hair looks blue in the light. I'll give him some blue hair. And then as it goes into the shadow really pop a little dark on his side. And really, it's okay just to leave it like that. doesn't have to have a whole lot of stuff in it. You start painting eyeballs at this scale. See? Let me get in there. Start painting eyeballs at that scale. Hey, that looks like a painting right there. You know, that happens quite a bit too. Um, as you're painting your painting, you might want to, you, you might see other paintings in it. But to keep it that basic is just A-OK. -okay. That's my A-OK -okay sign. <laughs> it's really about this day and this light. Oh, I noticed when I, when I casted the shadow for my brush, see that shadow? That's kind of like what I want my shadows to look like. Really light and airy. We'll have 
what of a blast doing that. You did all this work just to take it all out with those shadows. Oh boy. Let's see. Let's get some of those darks in the windows and the doors. Those are, those are a big deal. Shall I make yourself up a big batch of color? Um, I'm going to use Prussian blue. And magenta. And maybe some of them are blue. Okay. And so, let me get my photograph here. So the reason I sort of underpainted this first is because I'm going to come in with this dark. Like that. Just like that. Still loose. I cast a little bit of a shadow over all this. Get a couple little darkies in there. We'll come back and glaze, glaze that down a little bit. And leave out those highlights. Some darks in there. I see some darks in here. And what else? Definitely some darks in here. Can I get those thicker? I got a lot in here. Some water. Let the watercolor do its thing. It wants to, but you gotta let it. I always say, think of it like a little kid. And I, I, I remember when I was teaching watercolor when Renee was a little kid, I used to use that analogy more, probably because I was raising her, but I, I noticed it, it's very much like kids. You know, if you try to control it too much, it'll rebel on you. Let's go a little number up here huh whatever it's kind of official all right we have some darks in here oh i got one two three oh A little red and just dab it in there. See what happens. The red's not too, it's not too bright, but it gets a little activity going in those darks. That's what I wanted. I think the magenta is really good in there too, because it's not, it's still really dark.
Come in here. Nice to draw a grip behind his head. So that sort of frames him. So she's dark up against the light. He's light on dark. This kind of leads right down to him. And you know, it's a little stark right now, but when we throw the shadows over there, hopefully that takes care of that. Things. Any little darks. I like to hit them. I like to tuck them back up, up underneath things like this, just around things. Um, that's an awfully big plan, isn't it? Well, it is pretty big. It could be. Okay. That's me making excuses. <laughs> well, there's little shadows underneath all of these things. See, there's little shadows underneath all of this, and all this, and this. And they cast shadows, but we'll, actually, we should probably do those now. I'm just gonna use ultramarine blue. So this gives you a nice little cast shadow. So I'll cast the shadow. These, well, they're kind of shaded in the inside, huh? They, they cast. Those shadows down. Oops. And there's this little thing will cast all the shadow down. So this and these. Kind of cool like that. So we don't have to stage this thing. I mean, you could really call it, kind of call it quits uh, <laughs> without all my staging shadows, but oh, I'll let you make that call. There's something in here. Sometimes these things go like this. So they might do that on the other side too. I don't like this line right there. When in doubt, take it out. Bit of a shadow under here. All those little cast shadows. I 
What was that orange box right there? I don't, I don't think we need it. Some interesting little plants and things in there. In there. Doing with all this. All of this, I'm setting all of this up so when I come back with my bigger ones, my big staging shadows. I don't really like this either. Oh, bummer. Must have accidentally got some watercolor in there. Um, there is kind of a neat little shadow. These kind of shadows can be this one going from here. It can just be good for giving you the perspective. So that does that, kind of brings you down. You know what you could do if you want to throw in some of these little rocks just like that. See what I did there? And make sure they're all very irregular. And and so you'll have a small one. Remember the light's coming from above. So you have a little small one and then you'll have a large one, maybe a big one, a wide one like that. Come down here. They won't have a really a highlight on the top. Oops. And I'm just using uh, ultramarine blue with a little bit of magenta. And I certainly don't have to put them all in, just, just a few. I just kind of sketch them in like this. I do like how they get really small down here though. Those are kind of neat. Indicate some. If you do every one of them, though, it, it'd probably look really. You know, people will go, "Wow, that's a nice, nice rock work." You know, <laughs> it's like you set your whole scene up to do the rock work. That would just be kind of sketchy about it, like that. Just and the light's coming from the top left, so your shadow is going to be on the bottom of each rock and to the right, bottom to the right. Um, one little trick is to take a couple of behind things like this, say behind and through things like this. Oops, sorry. Uh, a couple of right through. Some coming right out of the, right from the, I mean, behind here. Maybe some from the outside coming in. Now you want to you want me to show you how I do the, all those cobblestones? Let me show you how I do it. I don't. <laughs> no. I, I think you're just looking at a bunch of uh, You know, you certainly could do some things like this. Really flat. That kind of work. It's like doing these in perspective. So You've got the one rock that looks like this, right? 
let's say maybe it's just got a couple of small ones down below it. So when you look over the rock, it looks more like this. Cobblestones or whatever. A little more, you know, and they're rounded, but I wouldn't get too much into them. Just a couple little notes here and there. That kind of deal. Again, a couple right next to the curb. And you can bring those right up here on the sidewalk. Just looks like calligraphy after a while. Take some right under the table, outside the table. Probably enough. Better to underdo it. You can always add more. Okie dokie. Now, if you don't want to put these shadows in, don't do it. I'll show you how I do it. It's it's a uh, well, it's exactly how I did it in the comp. So let's just take, for instance, um, let's just say we have a big one uh, coming from here. I'm using ultramarine blue. And the reason why is because when it goes over all these other colors, it's, it's going to mix with them. Okay, now I just use water along the edges. And see, just water. <clears throat> That's the look. So here again, I'm doing the same deal. And then add water. Barely tell it's even there. I'm gonna get a bloom there, nice. We're gonna get one here too, yummy. All those, and feel free to use any colors you want. Maybe throw a little magenta in there if you like. Maybe throw a little bit of, I don't know. Have a, have a fun time. If you're having fun, it usually shows in your artwork. And a little bit over here. Oh, whoops. It's kind of a fade. Maybe a little darker out there. Maybe a little more. I'm going to go with the Prussian in there. All right, so we got another one coming from here. Let's see if I have enough paint. Okay, good. And I'm just going to take it right over this, right over this stuff. And there's a couple more over here. Kind of comes onto this wall a little bit behind this, take a little water. It kind of looks good with the hard edges too, so feel free to play with that. You can just kind of dry brush that and see what happens. Dry, dry, if you dry brush the water on there, watch, I'm just 
I'm just going to spread my, this is just water, but I'm going to dry brush it there and you'll get kind of a, it's not the same, you know, it's a little stiffer edge. I think it needs to be faded more. Hey, you know, you just got to try it. See what happens. So that directs the eye right down to the little focal point. Oops. Let this one go a little too long. And I hardly would ever stop a shadow right there without bringing it <clears throat> down under here. Of course, all of this is in shadow too, so. Just cast that shadow down there, which stages him. I go around him. Like that. And I'm gonna soften those edges. So you can see a little bit of brickwork through there. Maybe later I, I might come back and hit get a couple get a couple of goodies in there. You know, this is that time when the painting when it's just you're just bringing it home. Just an outdoor cafe scene. So I love it when things go into the light and into the shadow, into the shadow and into the light. It's fun. Now here's a case where you have this cast shadow within a cast shadow, you know? So you have this, maybe a big, something in the sky it could be a palm tree could be like you say a big some of these flags or whatever creating shadows maybe it's just cloth who knows they have cloth hanging around everywhere around there um creating these beautiful shadows and then sometimes you get a little cast shadow within a shadow i've seen that happen it's fun. And this, this window's a little stark, so I'm gonna knock back these window seals a little bit. Maybe with a little bit of um, Prussian blue and yellow, making them a touch green. Just a greener window seal. And maybe something in there, maybe something in there. a little light. Knock that back in value a little bit. There we go. And now's when you do all your dialing in, play around with it, try not to ruin it. If you're loving the way it looks, maybe you should leave it. One of the hardest things to do is quit a painting while it's working. Because you want to do more, because it's all working. So you want to do more and more and more. And then that's when the that's when the problems start. A little cash out on there. That's when you you start overworking the painting. And that's oh, I wanted this one there. It's got that watercolor feeling. All 
sometimes now on a like a bleached out light on on him i'll come up with something a little bit warm in the half tone like this as it comes into the light a little bit that's fun no this doesn't have to be white i mean it's it is white but oh yeah we do have shadows over it too that's kind of neat maybe i'll put the shadows over it first and see how that looks and if i but if they can use a little color change, maybe we'll throw a little bit of yellow on it or something. We'll have a couple of little cat shadows on there. And maybe we can just fuzz those edges a little bit with water. Oh boy, never ends. Maybe there'll be a little shadow on the side of this. Let's see. Charlotte, you're always the first one done. That's because you did two or three of them already, right? <laughs> well, you know, I just I like to stop so I don't go too far. Yeah. That's just an experienced painter. I think so. Oh, yeah. Leave it when it's working. Yep. You can always go back. Yeah. Or do another. Yep. Why not do another? Sometimes I like to see them from far away. Let's see, like that. Okay, hey, that's holding together pretty good. Sounds great. Oh, here's a trick too. Watch this. <laughs> Flip it. See it the other way. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Oh, I like that. Or flip it, flip it that way. See if things are working. You see if, if something pops out. Abstractly speaking, you know, maybe maybe you want to pump up some color here and there, or, or maybe not. But, you know, it just helps you to look at it in different ways. So anyway. Okay, let's film. Oh, wait, I have it backwards, don't I? Okay, Charlotte. You're the only one with something. Well, I'll start on this one, and then you guys can start turning them in. You know, it doesn't mean they're finished. You don't have to be finished when they're, you know. Oh, I really like the shadow effect. Doesn't look nearly as good on Photoshop as it does in the painting. Wow. My 
that's when I know I did it right. Okay, so whoops, yours. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's move this up. Very colorful. I know, I loved it. It was. This is a good one. Yeah, I don't want to go to Italy again. Yeah. <clears throat> that makes me want to hang out there. Oh, I know. We should all do a workshop there. Could you imagine? Go there for like two weeks. In two months. In Venice. Doesn't, don't one of you have a house there? Come on. Let's go hang out. <laughs> I know a good apartment in Florence. It's huge. Yeah? Yes. Oh, I love Florence. Let's all go there next year. Let's. I've got a great place to stay. Yes, in more than one apartment. Look Florence. Courtyard. Signing up. I'm signing up. Is it Airbnb? Uh, yes, he's on Airbnb, but the owner lives on the top floor. It's all been renovated, and it's beautiful. And there are two apartments that have three bedrooms each, and washers and dryers and everything. Wow, oh, fabulous. I, I definitely want that information. Maybe you can put it in the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, do that. If we can ever go fly again. Yeah. Well, you definitely had the Charles Reed class. Well, I've taken so many classes from him. He's such a class. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do watercolor, you might as well do watercolor. That is so watercolor. And, you know, remember what I was saying earlier about uh, sometimes you can see a painting within a painting? Now look at this. A little scene right there. I, know, I kind of almost was just going to do that part of it. Wait, but, but there's a little oh. scene right there. I don't ever want to lose my lessons from him because of the way he paints. Yeah. yeah I wish I would have taken one of his classes. Oh, he's still in Europe and New Orleans. And he, he never mingled wow. with people, though. He just kind of did his own thing. Uh huh. And he just had to watch. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a great way to cheat. That, that's how I learn anyway. That's why I don't really need to take the class. I just, I, I look at the book and then I'll, I'll copy it. And that's all I need. So I don't even really need to see the process, although I think it would be helpful. But You know, I really liked your idea all the time of lining out, putting lines for perspective ahead of time. That yeah. is so important because I don't usually do that. It's usually, you know, one plane. Well, it's you don't have thing. to do that, but it, uh, if you're not going to do that, then it helps to have a pretty good background and perspective already. And yours, see, yours is, it's got plenty of perspectives. It's got plenty. It doesn't need every little, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I never would have drawn those lines unless I saw your demo. Well, great. Well, good. Very helpful. <laughs> well, that's one thing, you know, the next time you go out painting, you go out sketching your little book and maybe it maybe it sticks maybe it's maybe it's another little thing that can help you so that's all that's all of these classes are yeah my sister and i talk about that because um we can't wait to try it if we ever get past in a couple of weeks are yeah. you going to go november 7th and 8th over there at creative arts am i in the show yeah they're having a, oh. a festival over there oh uh no that's i think that's where the students are is your art still going to be there Hector and i are in it Oh, have I get to see George in person? Yeah. Woo. Um, no, I have to take it down next week, so. Oh, we'll miss it. Yeah, it's fun though. I love this broken, broken and very mosaic-like technique you have here. See how she just puts colors next to colors? It's really fun and festive and watercolorish. I mean, it takes my breath away when I paint like this. It, you did. You did. You done good. Well, thank you done good. I I don't know what to say except. Um, Let me put this one up to sell. Do more. Yeah. Do you have a web page where you put them up for sale? No, I have two galleries I'm in. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. I would show that to your gallery. 
I know. I, I can't. No. The, the audience that likes this type of painting wants something loose and emotional and expressive. <clears throat> so, a lot of people think that I see. I hate to paint where I look like his paintings, but, so it's kind of a odd scenario putting him in galleries. Well, I don't think it looks exactly like his paintings. The style. Yeah. That's fun. I love it. I love it. Love to paint. Yeah, you do. Well, it shows in your work. Thank you. Love the loose hitters. Yeah, nice color too. Really nice color. Yeah, I've just switched the whole bind. Oh yeah. Well, they have great colors. I like how soft they are. Just didn't he use those? No, he just used a little teeny palette that he could hold and he just huh. sat in front of his easel with his chair and his bucket of water mm -hmm. and he just did it. I agree. Very, direct, very slow <clears throat> painter. Very, very slow. You'd think he'd do his fast paintings, but he's very, very slow and direct. That's fun. Yeah, I think they call it direct painting and style okay <clears throat> oh i like your people there hey me <laughs> claire anyway um okay we got uh oh you even framed your little uh your little guys up look, look how color coordinated you are you flick <laughs> Oh, by the way, look at the ellipse on your table. Very nice. The table really sits. Sits in perspective. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> okay. And oh yeah, well, your all your perspective is really well, well done. Thank you. Yeah, that, that line that helped. Well, good. Well, good. See, the, the painting like this doesn't have to be so intricate. It's just capitalizing on the big stuff. Yeah, it really helps with the windows and the doorways. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a much more difficult without the line. <clears throat> yeah. So it looks like you maybe need some dark, maybe not this dark, but maybe some good darks. Yeah, this is on the uh, cold press paper, I mean, hot press paper again. So I, yeah. it, it went on looking really dark and then, you know, went to that. Uh -huh. So I come into some of those. Okay. Something maybe even darker than that. Some, yeah. some in the air, et cetera. And then under here, smack those and then i think i put even more shading on the people more shading yeah like you're giving a um a side like a oh i see like like this side's in shadow on their figures yeah just so just just kind of treat them more more almost like block like it. yeah you know okay yeah, let's see. And then the only thing I can say really is um, some, like this wall looks great, although you got some good variation in the color there. Um, maybe, these, maybe these could have a little more variation to them. I think mine could have a little more variation to them too. If you wanted to, and you certainly don't have to, but um, just very, I, I, you know, one thing I would have, done in mind too and i never got there i kind of forgot is to throw something a little bit of course not nearly this saturated but just a little bit of something warm in the lights oh yeah okay i can probably just do that right now i don't know if you guys can see but if i just hit a little bit of a little bit of something in there now that's too much here. I'll just hit a little and I'll just work that around with water and just dab it around. It feels like sunlight. Yeah. And that's about how fast I do it. Just like that. 
It's a little bit on there. So. Yep, it just, you know, you have a lot of light and you have a lot of middle value and now it's time to hit your darks. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. Thank Maybe you. That, that's it. And if you wanted to get any of that rock work or cobblestone or whatever, knock yourself out. But I would, less is more, less is more when you're doing those things. So, okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Francis. Well, that's one big shadow you got over the right hand side there. <laughs> or maybe you got a little shadow we'll cast on there. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Because um... it's only like a really, okay, here we go. It's just got a little dark over there. That's fine. It's okay. Yeah. And then when you're casting, these shadows. I definitely would have something in here and then really, really give it a nice soft edge like, like you did here. Very, very well done. I'll do a little bit down here. Okay. Yeah. Right here, just that kind of closes that corner off and it can be just as light as you did this right up here. Doesn't have to be really dark or anything. Um, I really screwed up that table, <laughs> but I didn't know how to fix it, so I just left it. Are you in here? Yeah, it looks like they're sitting in a okay. boat or something. Not the tabletop is not correct, but Your people look good. Um, if you get something dark underneath the tables, you'd be surprised. It'll anchor the table down a little bit more. Okay. And you can uh, I, I probably get some kind of shadow on the ground from this. Okay. It, it probably would be casting a little bit of a shadow down. I don't see it there, but I think other things might be blocking it. So something in there. If anything feels like it's floating, get strengthen the shadow underneath it. Like maybe a like touch more of this. Okay. Yeah. Windows look great. Oh, I could see even something darker back here, possibly. In some of these darks. Okay. I think this this uh, umbrella was casting a little bit of a shadow in there, so it kind of frames things too. So think about maybe glazing in a shadow back there. Try not to put it over the guy like I did. <laughs> <laughs> There's a neat little shadow back there, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I like your rock work there. <laughs> that's it. It feels like a wall to me, and that's all it needs to be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Katie King. Hello. All right. Hello. Let's see. All right, nice fresh looking painting. I like how you left all that white. Nice colors. It does feel like it's a little floating here. I would get a little bit of a shadow going in there a little bit more. Okay. This, this does too, so just a little bit of shading underneath. I like the color you used here, this blue. I think that would be fine. Good shadow. And I closed this corner in a little bit more like you did up here. I might I might do a little bit more of that there. Okay. And I did this one and this one too. Very, very, very soft edged. Huh. So it kind of see see how it kind of pulls the viewer's eye into the Yeah, it does. There's some spotlighting around the outside. They, they don't uh, if you get too dramatic with it, it gets it gets ridiculous. Okay. So I, I, I keep them really, really light. Like like you did here, it's very oh. faint, uh -huh. with very soft edges. Okay. Uh, and I pulled this dark right behind the guy here. I thought that. Let's see. Okay. 
um, kind of frames his face a little bit. Um, also, I, I, I hit a couple of little cast shadows over here for the feeling of light and it looked really soft edges too. So that, okay. That's a, yeah. um, and if you don't like it, don't do it. Yeah, um, no, I think it's good. Let's see. Maybe a little shadow. Like, a, especially here where this one's in the light, I might cast a shadow from this little lamp here, or maybe this. Yeah. That's, those are small things. Um, okay. Also, with the people, I might give them a shadow side, like on the on the right side, a little bit. Okay. So, gives them makes them feel like they're receiving light and going into shadow. Okay. That's about it. I think one of the challenges that I continue to have is um, using one brush for everything. Yeah. And so I think my my detail will improve, but it's just, it's not there. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So just, just for the rock work too. As this plane that's facing us this way, yeah, um, that'll make you feel like it's going downhill. Yeah, really common. It's really common to do that. What you want is you want it to be flat, ah. and and then this one going toward the point, the point like that. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so more 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 flat. The part that's facing us will be flat. I see. And I just kind of sketch them in there really quick, just kind of, you know. So same here. Okay. And who's the, you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is a little down. I mean, sometimes they have really quirky roads over there, but. Yes, they do. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Tony. Uh, Tony. Hey, Tony. <laughs> hey Rob. <laughs> hey Toby. Yeah, oh, very light. Very, very, very light. With the, now this is what I call a stark painting because you've underemphasized the lights, or let's say some some of these shadows. So you, you come up with this very light thing, and then you come with, with your darks. You're coming in almost full force, so that's giving you a. Um, a very stark, and that can be nice uh, when you get when you're trying to get that feeling of a of a, a sunny day. That can happen. Your plant is this. This is to die for right here. This is just this perfect. Everything should be like that. Everything. It looks like you didn't didn't finish the people yet. Well, oh, I didn't say so. <laughs> I, I'm afraid to go further with them. Uh, Think of a little bit of shadow, a little bit of shadow on the right side. Okay. Um, I think I think her maybe a little darker. Maybe not blue though. Maybe something kind of red or pink. I don't know. That looks a little ridiculous. I'll just use black because I'm boring. <laughs> but just giving it a light side, even your hair will have a light side to it. So. M2. Yeah, after a while, the people just end up being props and you just treat them like you treat a table or a plant or something. That's when the whole, you get a whole look that way. What we usually do though, what people usually do is they, they do everything perfect and then they get into the people and the painting and then they, they treat them very different. And they, they, the people really pop out. So, but you are, you're, you're doing it fine. Uh, you did the same thing I did. I, I maybe we'll give a little bit of a 
side to that stair. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Other than that, I think you're looking pretty good. Okay, I have to say this was probably one of the more challenging. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about their work? Mm, not my favorite. <laughs> not your favorite? I think it looks pretty darn good. <laughs> That's okay. I, it just all those tiny details and then all the light and shadow. It's, yeah. it's really complicated, I mean, in a odd way. Um, okay. But um, yay, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Okay, Henry. Hi, Rod. I really. Do you have another one? Yeah, this is my. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for sh uh, showing this uh, Charles Reed because yeah. He, yeah, he he was my favorite uh, teacher before I met you. I mean, uh, on books and DVDs. I never met him though. But you feel like you do, huh? I mean, yeah, yeah. I I watched every uh, DVD and uh, I even bought the latest uh, soft common watercolor problems. I think that's the title. Yeah. Mm. I saw the the portrait he did, uh, Sergeant. That's wonderful. Yeah. In, oh, yeah, in yeah. that book, that that's in the reason for. It. It's a little book, but there's very, um, embarrassing, including landscape and figures. Yeah. yeah. But I like his flowers the most. I studied the most. Yeah. Oh, I'll take a good look at him. I, I I know he paints a good stuff. You know, he paints in oils too. I, his oils. Yeah, I have a book uh, uh, on flowers in oil. Yeah, by him. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he's known as a watercolorist. But yeah, that's know. his yeah. earliest book. Actually, the first book. Yeah. Yeah. He paints. He paints. He's an he's a he's a well studied artist, which means he's just a painter. Yeah, I think and, uh, my um, problem with his style is that he draws without uh, the control, the perspective, you know, that kind of uh, uh, sketch. Yeah. He he does it like a single line drawing without uh, like a, almost like blind drawing without yeah. uh, lifting lifting the pen or, or pencil. Uh, and you know the eye keeps uh, on the uh, object he draws and the, it, it, but he he does um, allow the artist to see the hand, the the right hand or the, the you know the pen. But uh, basically, yeah. you, you you have to draw like with one continuous line. That was, that's very hard for me. Yeah, blind contour. Yeah. Yeah, very calm, yeah. Right. But I, I I prefer your way. So uh, we have better. We could do that too, and I haven't really. I can never do it. I tried numerous times. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just not my style. <laughs> but I, I, I like the results. It forces you to be loose. So yeah, he, drawing, drawing on the right brain. Yeah, right he, brain. he connects shapes yeah. and the uh, inside, outside, or in one uh, shape. Contour drawing. <laughs> yeah, she contour drawing. flowers that way, Rob. Yeah. This beautiful painting. Um, Henry, I really like the color you're getting in your darks. Oh, you thank you. Color. Yeah, I, I use his uh, Blues, uh, violets, greens. kind of uh, uh, multiple load with the cold and the cool and in one stroke. It's also very yeah. Chinese. That's why I like him. Yeah. He's very what? Very. Um, I don't know if he ever studied Oriental art, but uh, oh, to yeah. me, it's very uh, calligraphic. Um, you can see it in his work. You know he did. <laughs> you know he did. That's what attracted me to his work. Yeah. Yeah. I love all. I love that that loose, aggressive. Uh, well, not aggressive, but I mean loose. Yeah. Um, um. Just. It feels like Zen Buddhism or something. You know, it yeah. feels like you're. It got a lot of completely in tune with what they were doing. Yeah, he, he has a lot of tripping. I know uh, some uh, uh, Japanese screen painter, they like dripping yeah. also the, oh. the drips as much as uh, Charles Reed does <laughs> on vertical surface. Look at all this calligraphy. Look at, look at all this calligraphy in your painting right here. Gosh. 
Thank you. You just let it go right there. Chop, 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 chop. Love it. Yeah. Oh, the other Love artist uh, who is influenced by him is uh, John Wiley, I think. It's a pretty John Wiley. Uh, let me see if I can bring that out on my phone. John Wadley? Yeah, it's a British uh, artist. I think they met. Uh, two of them a lot met. Of British artists are great. Yeah, yeah. But he does the mosaic um, the best. Yeah. Uh, L -E -Y. Anyway. yeah. I think everything in this painting is perfect and you should sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, but if it were me, I would put a little bit of a glaze of a shadow over the right side. Okay. For these people. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Just a little, maybe, maybe over here, just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Just something. Okay. And that's a, that's about it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll um, do that. Yeah, this is just. Wow, this whole area, like I say, there's a painting right there. Another painting within a painting. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it works. Okay, thank you. Nice work. Thank you very much. Okay. Here we go. Let, let me make, make sure you're muted, everybody. I take it to hear some of the record. Uh, let's see. Daryl. <clears throat> All right. Now we got some perspective going on that one. Okay. And again, nice colors, nice perspective, maybe a little more dramatic than what we saw up there, but I think it's working just fine for me. Oh, thank you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, you know, it's tempting to get a pen, Rob, and, and kind of, you yeah. know, detail around the, the figures there, but I don't know if that's, is that allowed? Hey, or um, that's a great idea. What, and it's, it works so perfect for this kind of scene. So, yeah, sure. Do you want to come in and clear an area up? Sure. And I like to do, I really like to do my pen work, and I, but I usually do it before, but I really like to do it afterwards. And I can't tell you how many times I've come into a painting where I've said, well, I guess this goes into the, my 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 batch of paintings that really aren't ever going to go anywhere, even though it's a pretty good painting. But but then what I'll do is I'll I'll take a little pen and ink to it, and I go, oh, I, I think, think that I, makes I, it jump into the good pile. So I you know, so I I had intended to go with darker shadows under the umbrella in the back wall there. You know, I, that's yeah. all. No picture, really, really dark shadows there. Yeah. So I don't. I could still do that. Sure, I love the line work. I can see you going more into this. Sure. Oh yeah, I can definitely see some darker shadows back there. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that'll kind of bring that last figure forward a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. dark, dark, and all that up. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. You know, think that it helps or what? I don't. Know. Oh yeah, definitely. I like. It. I really like this. I, I like this area too. This whole area has a really understated, nice, nice feeling to it. Again, you know, just like I, I think I would give a little more shadow to the left side of her. Let me, let me make that a little bit better. They're kind of leaning, you know, my windows here. They're not, you know, they're not even, you know. That's what happens. You go free out and everything. Just, you know, it's kind of they're kind of leaning over there. But well, well, might have been an earthquake, right? Oh, this one, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, that's totally okay. Um, if you add a little orange here and then a little orange here, it'll straighten that out. Same with the dark. If you add a little dark here, clean it up, huh? Just to that corner, yeah. And then a little bit to this corner down there. It'll, it won't be perfect, but you know, it'll, it'll. I, what I like about it is, is it looks really sketchy, <laughs> you know, in a good way, not, 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 the fun, not everybody uses that word funny. Um, that helps right there, what you're doing. Huh? Yeah, a little dark underneath things. Darker shadows on the floor. Yeah, yeah a little darker, especially right under. 
and then maybe a little bit of something out there. Yeah, that helps already. Y'all right, yeah, okay, just darken up the shadows on the ground yeah. and the wall there. Yeah. I kind of like what I think was that Henry's uh, change the umbrella to green. You know, that was going to need, yeah. you know, if you want to bring attention to the umbrella, I guess he could. Uh, I, yeah, I agree. Uh, change the umbrella to red or green or something. Yeah. But, red. Ooh, red. Ooh, yeah. how, about, how about I do that? I'll throw a red umbrella on mine. Let's see what it looks like. I don't have turquoise paint, but some, you know, if you have a turquoise colored paint, you get a nice clean uh, turquoise color, but maybe red will work with pale painted red. I just put mine red. I just put, I just put red on mine. I think it looks good. I think I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. Yeah, you know why it looks good? Because it's got it's got this sort of yellowish wall and this blue right next to it. You get this whole red, yellow, blue thing going on. There you go. I don't know. I can mess around with it. Got darken up the shadows a little bit. That's what we do. Clean up the windows. No, it's hard to that clean. is what we do. We mess around. <laughs> we mess around and sometimes we make, you know, yeah, my banners, ended, my banners ended up getting kind of long, but I, now I'm looking at it. I could probably put some pole, you know, some uh, horizontal rods that we had holding the banners up, but I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, adding more details. I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah, maybe the cropping's more in here, though. So if the cropping's in there, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, just cut. Yeah, just cut the paper off. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, cut an inch. Yeah, cut an inch off. Cut an inch off. Yeah, crop it. I mean, I did mine. I I cut mine in here too. So whatever you like, but I like that better. Yeah, we'll crop it. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's that's the nice little thing about watercolors. <laughs> Put it on the paper cutter. Take an inch off all the way around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Looks good. Nice. That was, that's not easy. Is that Charles Reed? You said Charles Reed? Yeah. yeah that's Charles easy. Reed. He's another old pro. Hard to yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He is a great one. Okay. It's Luis. Okay. How are you? Are you there, you Luis? Yes, I'm here. Excuse me. Um, okay. Nice colors, red, yellow, blue. Yeah. Red, yellow, blue. The green here. I mean, you don't have to put any rock work even anywhere on this. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes it can, it can be, I call them descriptive strokes. So if, if you wanted to get through um, now it looks like our wall here, like maybe you put these up on the wall or something, but you know what we could do with that? That's an easy fix. Um, if you wanted to, let's see. You could just say, for instance, you could just take this brown, like this, this sort of brown you have over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you glaze that up to here, Kind of like they will just say like that. And then we took this blue right here, sort of, I'll just use gray because I don't have another color. Maybe up a little higher. Right. Just keep it where it is. I, I don't, it's up to you. If, if you keep it where it is, I think it would be just fine. No, it's, be fine. A little, it's a perspective, right? That's not quite right. I. Uh, it's just that, uh, the bottom of the wall is here. Right, exactly. Yeah, it shouldn't be. It should be. So it looks like you, you just put these in a little far, which it doesn't really matter. But um, so if, if you wanted to clear that up, that's what I would do. I would just take some. See, you don't have to use brown because this is already blue. So if you just use like an orange. Yeah, or I have an over that. 
I have an Indian red, which is yeah, oh yeah, that would work. Yeah. Something like that. And then if you give yourself a little bit of I didn't really well, I guess I did put a little bit of something in there, but um a little line. Let's see what color here, like a black. Or something in here. A little bit of a line saying, like, for instance, this is the bottom of the wall. Uh -huh. A little yeah. indicating line. It doesn't have to be nearly this dark or anything like that. But just a little bit of something in there could, could help. Sure, sure. Just, I see that. Yes. It gives us the difference between this plane and this plane. That's yeah. all. Okay. Yeah, my umbrella is red because I started yeah. painting. Uh, and then I realized I had forgotten to draw it. <laughs> and well. I. <laughs> well, I went back and made mine red, so. Yeah. But then the uh, the flag thingies, um, they, they were, you know, I could crop this because right now it looks like two pairs of pants hanging on a. <laughs> on a... I've seen that too. Maybe not over a cafe though. Right. Um, Sorry, Two doesn't... Pants Cafe, that's what it is. Two Pants Cafe. No, uh, yeah, they're a little, they're, they're a little low for that situation. Now, I, I was kind of looking at it thinking, is this the top of your piece? Is that where you're going to crop it? Well, that's what I was thinking, so that these flags don't look like pants or something. Yeah, something more like that. Yeah. Then we'll just leave the top of that wall out. Who cares? We don't need it. Yeah. Um, easy solve. I really like the way you did this door with that little bloom, that little watercolor wash in there. Mm -hmm. I could see maybe a little bit of something dark in there, maybe done the same way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I might get something nice and dark underneath. But let, let me do this better here. Yeah, I had a hard time with these tables and these people. <laughs> Let's see. So just, just a little bit of something down underneath. And then a little bit of, on this side, a little bit of shadow on the right, right hand side. Right. On them too, a little bit of shadow on the right hand side of them. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe that people don't need very much definition. Right. Well, a little light and shadow will, will make them feel more like they're in the situation. Right. This guy looks looks kind of small. He looks like he's feeling small that day. <laughs> he's a kid. <laughs> no, he's a little kid. There you go. So a kid messing around there. That works for me. I think we saw some sort of shadow coming off this something in there. So yeah. If you wanted to, it was not quite finished at the end for the shadows. I think I was going a little fast, so yeah. But so look, look for the yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely satisfied with my production, but um, like others have said, I I learned a lot, so it's good. Well, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah, I was thinking on the bottom right there was too much of the seeming the street part and there should have been more mm -hmm. of the terrace part where, where the people are yeah yeah so the way to get good at it is to do it over and over and over i mean yes. you don't have to do this painting over and over but just things like this i i always like to tell everybody the story where when i was a kid and i don't know what grade i was in but i was pretty darn young maybe second or third grade and this Artist came to school and showed us how to draw birds. Yeah. And I remember watching him and thinking that was the coolest thing I ever saw. So I went home and just drew birds. And we, we did it in class and they learned it. And so I went home and just did it over and over and over and over. I don't, I, I would, I mean, I'm the kind of person to do that. So I yeah. probably redid it 20 times. I mean, a minimum. It might have been 50 times. I don't know. <laughs> and that's the way I learn. I mean, that's the, I think that's just the way to learn any kind of craft or any kind of art form. 
you know, it's the way you get good at cooking too, right? You cook three times a day, you get good at it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So same thing, same thing here. If, if this is challenging for you, but you actually like it, you should do more of it. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll come after two. I'll come after two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So All right. Thank you. Make sure we're muted, everybody. Let's see, we got Robin. Hey, Robin, all right. I want to eat there. Aw, I'll take that. <laughs> I feel like it's a little stiff. It does not look like yours or Reed's or Prendergast. And I wanted it to look like that, so I got to do it six more times. <laughs> Yeah, that's your homework. Now, um, maybe a little bit more shadow on the ground too, you know, and you know, be, feel free to just kind of spill it down there. You know, it doesn't have to be really perfect or anything. Just, just a, a little kind of wash on the ground. And I like this guy all by himself over here. I think that's great. Um, yeah, he's got a nice little shadow on him, so that's why he really sits down. I think uh, uh, literally on him too. A little bit more, just kind of bring that together a little bit more. Oh yeah. Yeah, he kind of fades away into the shadow that way too. That's better. Yeah, just a little bit on the right hand side. Just make them feel like they're out of the sunlight. And anything you want to put on the tables, you know, little bottles and things can be fun. Just stuff. Henry used a lot of really interesting calligraphic marks, and I think that really solved the problem very well. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't need to actually literally paint the things. That's what the sort of calligraphy, it just looks like. I don't know if I were writing, if I were writing a story about this, there were more people and they were sitting down and like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's the calligraphy reminds me of kind of, you know, you know, whatever. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I probably get a little bit more shadow over here, a little bit more shadow over here on, on the objects, maybe even down there. Um, what do you think is something darker in here? Yep. Pop them. Maybe a little ultramarine blue or um, some magenta or something colorful. Let's see. And you know what I did? I came back. I, I was just telling somebody about this, but I. I came back and hit a little bit of yellow in my lights. Now this is way too much, but just just a, just a little taste, little hint of something in the warm side in the lights it could be nice. All right. What? Any more questions? I think that's about it. No, it just looked. It just. I, I need to do it more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these are you know different. They're different than vault landscapes. Yeah, I'd never heard of Robert Reed or Reed Charles Reed, and so thank you very much for yeah. bringing them to our attention. That it was very inspiring. Oh, good. Yeah, there's a lot on them online. So, yeah. Charles Reed is the name. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. And Ethel. Okay, I thought, wow, you, you got a little closer in on the people there. Yes, I'm I like it. Thank you. I like the guy in the middle. He's he, he was okay. Right now, yeah. I'm, right now, I'm working the gouache to make that red flag smaller. <laughs> oh, okay. You want to yeah, pick it up a little bit? Oh, uh, yes. Give it a little haircut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I put the I put the flags in last, and it was not a good idea. <laughs> well, that's 
so they make gouache. Yeah. I think That's a little bit, a little bit more shadow on these. Yeah. A little bit more. I like, I like this lady here. She might be. Sometimes you know. Sometimes the person's face will be in shadow, and their shoulder will catch a little light, you know, from the umbrella. So, I don't know. Just remember that. that I had trouble with the tablecloths. I love draping, but boy, those didn't want yeah. to work for me. <laughs> the right side will be in more in shadow. Yeah. Again, over here too. Just, just treat them like any other form just just the right side will be in shadow oh yeah that you, you fixed it i couldn't <laughs> a little just yeah just a little bit in there yeah your rock work too is just that's perfect that's just perfect oh thank you yeah it doesn't need to be any more than that um, i made my umbrella a little bigger too with some gouache <laughs> Oh, you did? You came back and made it bigger? Okay. I made it bigger on the, it was lopsided, so. Yeah. I'm lopsided. <clears throat> Your piece looks pretty darn good, though, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, now I'm going to get picky with you because, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, see how, you see how uh, the back is rounder? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. The front's flatter. So we want the opposite. Maybe the front, maybe what, what you could do is just take this, this dark hair around the corners uh -huh. to make that a little bit rounder. Yeah. And then maybe just flatten the back a little, little bit more and you'll get you'll get a nice ellipse. Okay. You could even yeah. put you could put a cup of coffee right there with a the reflection. No, never mind. Oh, that could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Somebody Anyway, um, <clears throat> why didn't I do that in mine, darn it? Okay. Uh, other than that, I mean, gosh. Anyway, what's really working for you is your, your composition looks great. Your basic composition is great. I do agree with, you know, work, working this umbrella and taking this up. I think both of those yeah. are the really smart moves. Yeah. I had to um, take it off the it was it was a drawn off the edge, but when I painted the wall in, I kind of took it off. So Yeah. Yeah, that's what we do in the end. We we fix them. Yeah. It's all about to fix them. That's what they say the difference between an experienced artist and an inexperienced artist is the experienced artist just knows more way to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that they don't have the problems, they just know more ways to fix it. Yeah, well that's a good thing for me to learn. <laughs> Yeah. More than that. Cool. So maybe a little line. Sometimes, you know, you'll get a little something, a little bit of stuff or a little bit of dividing line in between the wall and the ground. Uh -huh. Something in there might be. Oh, yeah. That I didn't get there, did I? Okay. That's a... cool. That's being picky. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. I like picky. 